The Whistler. And now, The Whistler's strange story. The Rawhide Coffin. The girl, sitting alone at the Kauai bar, paid for her drink, and then counted what little she had left. A frown crossed her attractive features. Nineteen dollars. Nineteen dollars and a few cents. This, at the moment, was Marilyn Millington's sole fortune. Not a very comfortable backlog for a girl alone in Honolulu. It had been almost two months now since she'd quit her job in Los Angeles, followed her boss straight to his Maui plantation to shake him down for a cool 10000 for what she knew. But something had gone wrong. The authorities had gotten to him first. And Marilyn's dreams of blackmailing her way to Easy Street went up a dead end. She sighed now and picked up her drink and sipped it thoughtfully. Her eyes wandered toward the entrance of the bar. She saw a woman there looking around nervously, anxiously, until her gaze met Marilyn's. Almost immediately, she started toward her, crossing the room in swift, nervous strides. You look like a decent kid. Here. What? I want you to do something for me. What are you talking about? Take it. Keep this for me till I get back. Your purse? I haven't time to explain. Put the purse under your coat and keep it out of sight. But I can't. I can't stay. They'll be here any second. Hey, there. Don't try to get away. Just leave me alone. Just take it easy, lady. You're not going anyplace. The race is over now. No. No, let me go. You haven't anything on me, not a thing. We'll just let the judge decide that. Come on. In the mirror, you watch as the policeman escorts the woman out of the bar. You wonder what it's all about, don't you, Marilyn? And as soon as they're gone, you go to the powder room, lock the door, and open the purse you've kept hidden under your coat. And draw in your breath at what you see. It's a thick roll of bills, Marilyn. And confused as you are, you start to count. Eight hundred. Eight hundred dollars. Yes, Marilyn, eight hundred dollars. Thrust into your hands from out of the blue, just when you need it the most. In your excitement, you start to throw the purse away and then check yourself. And decide to investigate further. You dump out the contents, rummage through the usual cosmetics to find a social security card, driver's license, and birth certificate. All in the name of Leona Chadwick. And then one thing more, a registered letter also addressed to Leona Chadwick. You unfold it. Dear Miss Chadwick, thank you for answering the advertisement we placed in the Star Bulletin. Our reason for going to these extremes and trying to locate you is to notify you that your uncle, Henry Chadwick, passed away several months ago, and you, as his only survivor, are his sole heir. He suffered losses recently, and his estate now amounts to only $51,000. Your uncle regretted that the untimely death of both your parents... He's a girl in his utter and he's losing complete track of your whereabouts. And he was deeply sorry never to have seen you since you were a child. However, we ourselves are looking forward to the pleasure of meeting when you arrive in San Francisco. All necessary documents have been prepared and await only your signature. Very true yours. <laughs> Well, Marilyn, it's quite a letter, isn't it? But there are some things it doesn't explain. Why were the police after Leona Chadwick? And why was she so anxious to get rid of her purse? As you leave the bar and walk down the street, you still wonder, don't you, Marilyn? Wonder if maybe there's more in all this for you than the $800. The thought stays with you throughout the night, and the following morning an idea occurs to you. You decide you're going to find out more about this Leona Chadwick. You hurry down to the courthouse, and after several inquiries, you find what you're looking for, a half-filled courtroom, and you're just in time. For the woman who handed you the purse last night is now standing before the judge. Well, so you're back. Yes, Your Honor. 
This time I see you're booked as Thelma Porter. One name's as good as another. I thought you'd learned your lesson the last time you were in here. Guess I didn't. Two months ago, I gave you the opportunity to straighten yourself out. I thought you were smart enough to see. I guess I'm not smart. Now, see here. Why are you always getting into trouble? You've been in Honolulu ten years now, and you've been in and out of jail for nine. What's wrong? You look like you're from a decent family. The best, Your Honor. Then why don't you tell me your real name? If we could get in touch with your family, maybe... Maybe they'd make things easier for you. Thank you, Judge. But you'll never know my real name. Never. <sighs> Have it your way. Why didn't you report to your probation officer? I was away, visiting friends. But I can pay my fine. There won't be a fine this time. This time you're going to prison. Thirty days. Thirty days. But, Judge, I've got to go to San Francisco. Sorry, thirty days. Please, Your Honor. I've just got to get to San Francisco. <laughs> You watch them lead her away again, don't you, Marilyn? This time for a 30-day sentence. And as you walk out of the courtroom, your mind is spinning, trying to put it all together. For some reason, this frightened woman is trying to protect her name, hide it, prevent the authorities from learning that she is Leona Chadwick. And suddenly another thought hits you. You stop dead still, almost numb by the idea. 30 days. She's in jail for 30 days, and no one in San Francisco, not even her lawyers, have ever seen her. Why couldn't I be Leona Chadwick? Yes, Marilyn, it's a startling thought, isn't it? So wild that at first you discard it, try to get it out of your mind. But it keeps coming back, intriguing you at first, then tempting, and then finally it's an overwhelming challenge with a promise of a fortune if you achieve it. You know that the lawyers in San Francisco will ask many questions before they're satisfied. But they might be questions that you can answer, Marilyn. The letter said Leona had been away for 15 years. You have her identification, everything. Even her Honolulu address on the envelope. That gives you another idea, doesn't it? Something that could put you on more solid ground and make the whole plan possible. Uh, how do you do? Are you the landlady here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm Mrs. Cook. Well, come about a room, have you? Well, no. You see, I'm a reporter for the Star Bulletin. Mm -hmm. I, I'm inquiring about Leona Chadwick. I, I understand she inherited quite a bit of money. Oh, that she did. Moved out yesterday afternoon. Went to San Francisco. Now, you can reach her there at the Hotel Lido. Yes. Mm-hmm. She said she made a reservation at the Hotel Lido. A reporter, hmm? Writing a story, are you? Yes, and uh, I'd like some facts about Miss Chadwick. This will be a big story. Good publicity for your place, too. I thought if I could speak to a friend of hers... Well, I'm... I am the closest friend Leona ever had. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm just about the only friend she ever had. Oh, I wonder if I might come in. Why, yes, dearie, do come in. Come right on in here. Hmm. Now, I think I'll be able to answer most of your questions about Leona. Oh, uh, sit down there, please. Thank you. Now, of course, I can't tell you much about the uncle. Leona knew nothing about him. But just that he bought, you know, and he sold antiques in San Francisco. I see. Mm hmm About her parents. Well... She had two. <laughs> uh, their names. Did she ever mention their names to you? Oh, my, yes, many times. Now, her father's name... Wait, now, let me see now. Oh, yes, it was Fred. Yes, that's it, it was Fred. Now, Leona used to say... Oh, Yes, Marilyn, you write it all down, don't you? Take a half hour of careful notes for your paper until you have nearly 20 pages of information, all of it concerning Leona Chadwick. Mm -hmm. 
back at your hotel room, you go over the details of your borrowed identity, pour through the vital statistics supplied by Leona Chadwick's cooperative landlady. Speak the important ones aloud over and over until they're almost a part of you. And there's something else that's important, too. Leona's signature. And far into the night, you practice writing the name a hundred times, a thousand times, until it's exactly like the signature on the social security card. And then the following morning, you're at the airport. Yes, miss? I'd like a ticket to San Francisco. Round trip? No. One way, please. Very well. And the name is... Chadwick. Miss Leona Chadwick. It's exciting, isn't it, Marilyn, the way it all began? One moment you had nothing, a girl alone in Honolulu without money. Then a purse is thrust into your hand, a purse containing $800 and the biggest opportunity of your life. Yes, Marilyn, and that's why you're on this plane now, approaching San Francisco, why you're posing as Leona Chadwick, the frightened woman who gave you the purse and who got herself locked up for 30 days in Honolulu. It's the opportunity of a lifetime, isn't it? With a letter addressed to her from the San Francisco lawyers with her identification, the knowledge of her past life, you're about to try for the gold at the end of a rainbow, a fortune left to Leona Chadwick by her uncle. Front boy, front boy, 221 for this couple. Sorry, sir, but it's like I said. There's a convention. The hotel is crowded. No rooms without reservations. Uh, yes, miss? I wrote you for a reservation. Did we confirm it, miss? Well, you see, I left home so unexpectedly. I see. I... What is the name, please? I'll check it. My name oh, is... Mr. Young, excuse me, please, but room 516 wants to speak to you again. Thank you. Excuse me, miss. Certainly. Hello? Uh, no, I'm sorry. No, there's no message for you here. Well, I'm sure the switchboard operator will connect you when any call comes through. Yes, I understand. It's important. You're welcome, Miss Chadwick. Ch Chadwick. And now your uh, reservation, Miss... Uh... That, uh... That Miss Chadwick you were talking to? Uh, yes. That isn't Leona Chadwick, is it? Why, yes. Yes, that's right. From Honolulu? Yes, she checked in last night. A friend of yours? Uh, yes. Yes, she is. I see. Now about your reservation. What was the name again, please? What? Oh, uh, Malloy. Hazel Malloy. Malloy. But, uh, Mallory M Malloy. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Malloy. There's nothing here. We probably wrote you that we were all filled up. Y yes, that, perhaps that was it. Never mind. We'll let you have the very next signal room that's vacant. Thank you. Uh, I think I'll go up and see Miss Chadwick. Uh, room 516. The house phones are right over there. Well, Marilyn, your scheme hasn't worked out according to plan, has it? It seems someone else is taking advantage of Leona Chadwick's jail sentence. Yes. And as the elevator reaches the fifth floor, you know there's only one thing you can do. And that's to have a showdown with a girl in room 516. Who is it? Yes, what is it? So you're Leona Chadwick. Why, yes. Why May I come in, thanks? Now, just a moment. What do you want? Just a friendly little chat. First of all, who are you, really? Who am I? I'm afraid I don't understand. Look, you're registered as Leona Chadwick. But who are you? Now, see. Come on, throw away the bobby pins and let your hair down. Whatever it is you're getting Let's at... Let's put it this way, then. I want to play Leona Chadwick, too. My dear girl, I have no idea of what this is all about. But it's beginning to tire me. Leona it? Chadwick's in jail. You and I both got the same idea, to collect her inheritance while she's tied up. I hate to disappoint you, my dear. But 
I am Leona Chadwick. Sure, say it often enough and you'll believe it. I think I can explain your unfortunate confusion. This girl in jail, she had a purse, perhaps. Purse? What do you mean? The purse was mine. That girl was a thief. She grabbed it from my arm just as I was going through the gate to get aboard my plane. That purse was hers. The only reason she gave it to me was to hide her identity. If she gave you the purse, she was only trying to dispose of stolen property before the police could find it on her. You got it all figured out, haven't you? Very convincing story. Only I don't believe it. It really makes very little difference to me whether you do or not. If you are Leona Chadwick, why don't you call the police right now? That's an excellent idea. Well, go ahead. What are you waiting for, Leona? Call him. All right. No, 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 wait. Do you know someone named Cooksey? Yes, Mrs. Cooksey, my landlady in Honolulu. Hello, operator. Put that phone down. Hello. Oh, what is the matter with that operator? Operator! I'm warning you, put that phone down! <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yes, operator. It, it's nothing. I accidentally knocked over the phone. As you replace the receiver, you stare at the lifeless body at your feet, unable to believe what's happened. It's like a nightmare, isn't it, Marilyn? Something unreal, and you don't belong in it. You shut your eyes tightly and try to blot out the scene, but it's no use. It is real. It has happened, and you're a murderess. Now you must act. You must get rid of her body somehow. You look around the room. Your eyes fall on a large rawhide trunk in the corner. It's perfect, isn't it? Minutes later, it's done. You've placed Leona Chadwick's body inside the trunk. Now all you can do is wait. Wait for the call from the lawyer's office. The same call that Leona was waiting for. It's got to come. Soon. You tell yourself that. And as the moments tick into hours, you become increasingly worried. And then... Yes? Miss Chadwick? Yes? This is Miss Mankin at Hodgkiss and Winters. Mr. Winters has just returned to his office. He'll be able to see you now. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll be over right away. As you lock the hotel room behind you, you pause for a moment in the hall. It worries you, doesn't it, Marilyn? Leona still being in there while you're gone. But you're quick to reassure yourself that it's safe, that no one will open the trunk. And by the time you've reached the street, you've driven the thought from your mind. Ten minutes later, Miss Mankin ushers you into the private office of Mr. Winters. Well, 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 Miss Chadwick, this is a pleasure. Do sit down. Thank you, Mr. Winters. Sorry, I couldn't see you this morning when you called. I had business in Oakland. Quite all right. <laughs> Gave you the opportunity to see a little of our town, hmm? Uh, yes, yes, I... Well, well, so we found you at last. <laughs> you gave us quite a time of it, you know. Your uncle tried to locate you for years. Lost track of you after your parents died. A terrible tragedy, then. Uh, Train wreck, wasn't it? No. Father's car skidded off a cliff. Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Here in San Francisco, wasn't it? Seattle. Oh, that's right. Your uncle did say that. Your father's business was in Seattle, wasn't it? Yes, he was in the banking business. With my mother's brother, Charles Turner. Oh, yes, yes. Your uncle always spoke highly of your mother, Miss Chadwick. Uh, Born in Hong Kong, wasn't she? Yes, but she spent most of her childhood in England. Ah, yes, I remember. Then she came to the States as a young lady. Met your father here. No, she met him in England. They were married in London. Oh, so they were, so they were. I remember hearing your uncle, Henry, mention your mother's brother. Very fine. Your conversation with Mr. Winters goes on for nearly an hour, doesn't it, Marilyn? A conversation of fact. He wants to be certain that you're the the Leona Chadwick he's been looking for. Yes, and you're ready with the right answers. Not once are your defenses down. The more you talk, the more restless you become as you think of Leona's body in the trunk back at the hotel. The fear within you grows, 
the fear that her body will be discovered while you're here. You twist the handkerchief nervously in your hands, wishing the cross-examination would come to an end. And then finally, Mr. Winters slides a sheet of paper across the desk and hands you a fountain pen. It's the moment you've been dreading, isn't it, Marilyn? Fighting to remain calm, you take the pen, sign Leona Chadwick's name to the document. Mr. Winters picks it up, looks at it, then at the signature on the social security card. A smile crosses his face, and he rises. Well, that's fine, Miss Chadwick. Well, I suppose that's all we can do for the present. I'll let you know when the other papers are ready for your signature. A moment later, you leave Mr. Winter's office. And as you pass his secretary's desk, you notice she's talking on the telephone. Her back is towards you, and she doesn't see you. And then as you open the outer door and are about to step out, something she says on the telephone stops you in your tracks. The Hotel Lido. Just a moment, please. Mr. Winters, I have a call for you. It's the desk clerk at the Hotel Lido. Desk clerk? It's about Miss Chadwick. He says it's important. You rush out of the office, run along the corridor, then down one flight of stairs and out into the street. You're certain the thing you feared most has happened, aren't you, Marilyn? Leona's body has been discovered in the trunk. As you reach the corner and step off the curb... Miss Chadwick! Miss Chadwick! You hear Mr. Winters calling you from his office window, and you start rapidly across the street. I'm Nurse Connors. You're in the hospital. Hospital? Mm, you had an accident. But you'll be all right. Accident? You were struck down by a car. You've been unconscious for over 12 hours. How do you feel, my dear? Oh, M- Mr. Winters, I... You know, I, you. I feel somewhat guilty about all this. If I'd run out after you instead of trying to call you from my window, I might have prevented it all. What, it... what do you mean? I... Well, there was a phone call for you from your hotel. The clerk was inquiring about a friend of yours, Hazel Malloy. Seemed they promised her a vacancy. Hazel Malloy? Yes, he, he wanted to know where he could reach you. Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, by the way, I, I brought the papers along for your signature. I just leave them with you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Winters. And yeah, there's I'll... no hurry whenever you feel up to it. You need rest, my dear. And don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. You're in the clear, aren't you, Marilyn? Perfectly. Leona's body wasn't found. And you're quick to realize that your fears have been foolish. The trunk is safe in the hotel closet, just as you left it. You spend a quiet, restful night. Awake in the following morning, refreshed and confident. Mr. Winters and the nurse are standing by your bed and smiling down on you. Feel better, my dear? Oh, yes, I feel wonderful. Just wonderful. Good. The doctor said I could take you home this afternoon. That is to my place in San Mateo. Oh? My wife and I thought you'd be more comfortable there. Till we show you're perfectly all right. My things, my clothes. I know. My wife thought you might be worried, but don't be. I took the liberty of having all your things sent down from the hotel. What? I talked to my wife a moment ago. She said your trunk had just arrived. My trunk? (laughs) None of your pretty dresses will be wrinkled, my dear. My wife's maid will see to that. She's probably unpacking your trunk right now. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.